In this video, I'm going to show you a little known feature in Google Ads that will actually drastically improve the performance of your bid strategies and thus your whole Google Ads account. If you want to truly maximize your revenue from your Google Ads campaign, you need to know about this. At my Google Ads agency, Bigflare, we actually use this in all our client accounts. First, I will walk you through how to set it up within Google Ads so that your bid strategies start performing better today. Later on, I will teach you how to optimize this setting over time and how to properly segment your account to use this feature. All right, so we are here inside a Google Ads account for one of my clients and the setting that I'm gonna teach you today that you need to know about is this bid strategies or bid strategy portfolios to put it more accurately. So you wanna to come to tools and settings and then click on bid strategies. If you're in the new interface, by the way, uh, it's gonna be rearranged a little bit for you, but you can still find bid strategies under tools and uh, it's going to be here under budgets and bidding click on bid strategies and then once you're here in the new interface you're going to see all the same things that I'm about to show you in the old interface so the steps are exactly the same in the new interface but you just want to find this page in a different place uh, under tools and then budgets and biddings, bid strategies. But let's head back to the old interface, which is the one I personally use more often. So tools and settings, if you're in the old interface, it's under shared library and then bid strategies. And then when you come to the bid strategies page, you'll notice that it says portfolio strategies. And the reason why this is called the portfolio bid strategies page is because what you set up here is a portfolio. It's a way of grouping campaigns together so that they're all grouped up into the same portfolio or folder. You can kind of think of it like a folder for multiple campaigns. And then all the campaigns inside that portfolio or folder, you can apply to the same bid strategy. And this is actually really powerful because it's not just an organizational tool. It doesn't just allow you to more quickly change your bid strategy settings across multiple campaigns, although it does have that benefit. It also has the benefit of when you group those campaigns together into a portfolio, it groups those campaigns conversion data together. So when you group the conversion data together, you get more conversion data in one place for your automated bid strategy. And if you know anything about the automated bid strategies, you know that it's currency is data. The more conversions you have in one place, the better the bid strategy runs. So using portfolios allows us to make the bid strategy, the automated bid strategy, run a lot better, make you more money essentially by making better decisions because we're giving it more conversion data in one place by grouping up our campaigns into a fewer number of portfolios than you have compared to the number of campaigns that you have. So let's go through how to set one of these up. You simply come to this page here, click on the plus button and now you can select which bid strategy you want to apply to your group of campaigns. Now, if you are an e-commerce advertiser, you're probably going to want to use target ROAS if your campaigns are quite mature, or maybe maximize conversion value if you're still building and in that testing phase where you don't quite know what your target ROAS is going to be yet. And then likewise, if you're lead gen, you might want to be using target CPA if your campaigns are mature, or maybe maximize conversions if your campaigns are less mature and you're still in the testing phase. Let's go ahead and create a target ROAS portfolio bid strategy and name it something sensible. I'll often actually just name it after whatever my target actually is. So let's say I was going to put a target ROAS in here of 300%, then I might just actually name this target ROAS 300%. And in the future, if I ever update my target ROAS, I would update the title of the bid strategy portfolio as well, just so that it's really easy to see what thing I'm actually aiming this bid strategy portfolio at. Uh, the owner, so I access this from an MCC or agency account. You might be accessing not from an agency account, so you might not see this section here. Uh, but yeah, just make sure the owner is something correct. Next up, make sure the currency is correct. And then you can select campaigns next. So if you click this button here, you will get First, an account selector. For me, I get an account selector because I have an agency account. You can use a search field up here if you want to search for specific campaigns. Now, I'm just gonna do this really quickly and just add a bunch of campaigns in here. So let's go ahead and add a few of these. 
click on the done box. And then what you're going to see here is Google is going to recommend you a target ROAS. Now, if this is the first time you're doing this, I do recommend that you pay attention to Google's recommendation. What it will normally do is give you a recommendation that is quite close to the current ROAS that these campaigns are actually getting. And if this is your first time running a target ROAS portfolio bid strategy, you probably do actually just want a initial target ROAS that is really quite close to the actual ROAS of the campaigns that you've added to the portfolio. Don't worry, you can change this later on, but just initially, when you first create the portfolio, it's a good idea to just go, don't rock the boat too much at the beginning. Instead, create a target ROAS that is pretty close to what you're currently getting on those campaigns. Let that target ROAS portfolio run for a couple of weeks to a month, and then you can start playing with the target ROAS, making it go up or down depending on what your true goal is. There are some advanced options in here. You can set a minimum bid limit or a maximum bid limit. Now, I actually don't recommend you do either of those two things. Some people like to think, yeah, I should set a maximum bid limit so that the machine doesn't run away and bid too much. But I think if you just trust the machine to get your target ROAS, and when you, and when you run these strategies effectively and you know how to work with the machine and you know when to change your target and when not to change your target, when to be patient and you know how to judge the performance properly. When you know all these things, you don't really need to limit Google with a minimum bid limit or a maximum bid limit. In fact, using these features can actually just harm your performance. I think if Google is hitting the target ROAS I want, then I don't care if it's bidding to this, you know, bidding some keywords really high or bidding some keywords really low. As long as the average target ROAS is being hit and met, then the bid strategy is doing its job, right? So I don't recommend using minimum bid limit or maximum bid limit. Uh, and then you are just basically done at this point. You click save and then the portfolio bid strategy will be saved. Now that you know how to set up bid strategy portfolios, you need to know how many portfolios to set up and how many campaigns to group into each portfolio. On one end of the spectrum, and what you might have in your account right now, is that no portfolios are being used, and thus every campaign is running its own bid strategy in kind of like a silo on its own. But the other end of the spectrum would be grouping all campaigns into one portfolio and then just having one target for the whole account. Which end of the spectrum should you be on? My answer is that you want to be as far towards the group everything into one portfolio end as you can, but with a caveat in place. The caveat is that you should create separate portfolios when your goal is actually different. A very common example here, and one that applies to most accounts, is the difference in goals for brand versus non-branded campaigns. These two campaign types will usually have two different goals. I normally recommend that for brand, you want above a 1000% return on ad spend. And if the ROAS is above that level, then I would just be aiming to achieve a 100% impression share to essentially show up all the time. Non-brand campaigns, however, are more incremental and usually will be aimed at a lower target ROAS. Maybe they would be aimed at, say, 300% return on ad spend. So in this case, you would set up one portfolio for your brand campaigns, and I would usually give it a target ROAS that is, say, 1000% or more. I would want the ROAS target on brand to be very high, but also not so high that my impression share starts to decrease. For my non-brand campaigns, I would set up a separate portfolio. I would aim that portfolio at my non-brand target of 300%, and I would make sure to add all my non-branded campaigns in there. In a lot of accounts, that is literally all you need. One portfolio for brand with a high ROAS target and one portfolio for non-brand with a lower ROAS target. Another example of where you might need different portfolios is if you have very different profit margins. Let's say you sell phones and accessories. On the phones, you only make a 15% profit margin, but on the accessories, you make a bigger 60% margin. In this case, the two different margin levels would require different return on ad spend targets. So the phones campaigns would go into one portfolio with a much higher target ROAS and the accessories would go into a different portfolio with a lower target ROAS to boost their volume. Oh, and one final example, you might want to have a target ROAS or a target CPA portfolio for all your established campaigns that are already hitting their target and have plenty of conversions, but you might set up a separate portfolio using maximized conversions or maximized conversion value. And this might be the portfolio you use for your new or tester campaigns that have not yet hit their target. Overall, aim to have as few portfolios as possible without having any campaigns with very different goals grouped together. 
Practically speaking, in most accounts, this means two to four portfolios, but you can get away with more if you have a very large account that gets lots and lots of conversions per month. And I should also tell you that unfortunately, performance max campaigns cannot be added to portfolios. So portfolios can be used for your search campaigns, your shopping campaigns, for pretty much any campaign type other than performance max. Google hasn't given us that option on performance max yet. Thank you very much, Google. I hope that it comes in a future update, but I suspect it will never come. So for now and possibly indefinitely, portfolio bid strategies are super important, but only for your non-performance max campaigns. So you search, shopping, YouTube display, you can use portfolios for all those campaign types, but not performance max. Now, before I go and tell you how to optimize your portfolios over time, let me just take a brief moment to tell you about my fully done for you Google Ads management service. If you need more sales or leads from Google Ads, and if you are looking for an experienced team to take that off your hands and do it all for you, then you should know that my paid ads agency, Big Flare, does exactly that. We are a small team of six people working very hands-on with a select list of clients. Everyone on my team has more than 10 years of experience. We are the absolute opposite to those big agencies where you get handed off to some low paid, inexperienced person or you get flip flopped between different account managers every month. So if you are looking to work with an experienced small team that you can trust, then click the link in the description below this video. Head over to our contact page and book in a time to talk with either myself or my team leader, Lee. We'll hop on the phone and have a chat about your business and goals and we will share an honest opinion as to whether we are confident that we can help you meet those goals. All right, so back to the meat and potatoes potatoes of this video and what I want to show you now is how you can uh, judge the performance of your bid strategy portfolios over time and optimize and improve them and most importantly how to actually just judge performance correctly how to not make mistakes when deciding whether or not to maintain your target or change targets or change strategy it's really important that you get this right so let's go over to the bid strategies section once again here we are on portfolio bid strategies and let's just open up one of my portfolios in this client account so that I can show you this report. And this report is really important to look at when you're making decisions about your target ROAS or about your bid strategies in the account. It tells you at a glance how your portfolio is performing versus its target. And it gives you other key information that lets you know whether this is even a good data set to judge performance based off of. And I'll explain that in just a moment. But first of all, let's start at the top here. And at, very, at the very top, you'll get a strategy status. So this is where you will get important notifications about the status of the actual bid strategy that is running in your portfolio. And you can see here that in this portfolio, uh, we are limited with budget constraints. Uh, that is actually a hard limit from our client who wants to uh, maintain a lower budget uh, this month just for concerns on their ends with uh, stock and supply. So we are intentionally running a limited budget in here. The strategy status screen is notifying me of that because that can affect the uh, performance of the bid strategy. And that's okay. Like in this case, I want to ignore this. That's fine. I know I'm running a limited budget. That is intentional. Thanks for telling me anyway, Google. Uh, this section here is quite interesting and useful. It will give you the top signals. So it will tell you what things within the bid strategy are performing well and what things are performing not so well. So you can see here it says examples of top signals used to optimize your bids. And what's really important to know about this is that these signals are already being optimized for. So, okay, we do quite well in the United States on mobile phone devices, and we do less well in Canada on weekdays, 3 p.m. to 11 p.m. And weekends, 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. actually works quite well for us. What this is telling us is that these signals are already recognized and optimized for by the automated bidding algorithm. We don't actually need to do anything to our bids to use this information. It's already being used to improve our bidding in our campaigns. And it's just giving us this information for our own knowledge. Like it's good for us to have this insight. It might affect our decision making in other areas of the business. It might affect the kind of 
ad creative that we add to the campaign in our next creative refresh and we don't really know what it's going to affect until we actually see the insights and it's just good to have those insights but you don't actually need to make any changes based on what you see here in the top signal section now down here what you're going to see is the really important part which is the performance history and you're going to be able to see over your date range what was your average target return on ad spend that was that's the blue one here so it'll show you your average target and it will show you the actual performance as well so you can see here it's over delivering on performance that's all well and good and when making decisions about whether the bid strategy is working well enough whether you need to change the target or change the bid strategy you want to look at this report and you want to pay special attention to this notification bar and sort of learnings bar down here like for example if i do past 14 days it's going to tell me here uh, and i want to show daily so important information gets shown at the bottom here especially information that actually affects the performance of the bid strategy or the way that performance is displayed so for example if you look at very recent data you'll probably see a blue line saying more conversion data could be reported and this is really important to know so here it will tell you what kind of time lag you're getting in your account so in this account it takes up to eight days after an impression for most of your conversion data to be reported now this is because of something called click to sale time lag basically google ads reports the time of the sale not to the date of the actual sale, the way you would see it reported in Shopify or Google Analytics, but Google Ads reports the time of the sale or conversion to the time when the last ad was clicked. So people clicking your ads today are probably or almost definitely going to make some sales in the future. And right now, people click on the ads have been added as a cost but their future revenue hasn't been added yet. Those people are going to convert in the future. We know this from our previous conversion history. We know, looking in the data of the account, that there's sometimes up to an eight day time lag between that last ad click and the actual sales. So that's what this blue bar is telling us here. And when you see it there, you know that if you are including this blue bar in your date range, it's not really fair. It's not a fair judgment of the actual ROAS because some of this conversion uh, value isn't being reported. So when I then see here, our oh, actual ROAS is 628, it's below my target. I know that actually I'm probably not viewing the right date range. I need to go back to eight days and older data. So if I wanted to really view the data properly, I would start from like eight days back and maybe give it a bit more just to be sure. So start from there and then I would give it at least 30 days, right? At least 30 days of data is a fair amount of time to be judging your bid strategies. Like the more the better, but the bid strategy actually works. When you're using automated bid strategies for target ROAS or target CPA, it's trying to get you that target on a 30 day basis. So that's the other really important thing. 30 day timeframes ideally or more for judging the performance. And when we do that, when we use slightly older data so that we get rid of that time period where not all the conversion data has been collected, we use slightly older data, we shift our time frame back a bit. And then we use longer data, we use 30 days instead of 14 days. Then you actually see, oh, okay, cool. The bid strategy is performing, it's actually overperforming. And then perhaps we panic less and we are less inclined to start flipping and changing the bid strategy. I just don't recommend you change your bid strategy super often, like at most once a month, ideally once a quarter, if you can get away with it. Certainly not every two or three days. If you're, if you're going in here, creating portfolios and changing it every two or three days, you're probably doing it wrong. So be wary of that. Use the information in this report to help you make better decisions, to help guide you. Yeah, you can see the yellow bar here is about my limited budget. Okay, yep, yeah, I know that. Uh, and down here under settings, you can change your target if you want to. As I say, don't change it too often. You've got advanced settings here, minimum bid limit, maximum bid limit. Once again, I don't recommend, recommend using those settings most of the time. And add or remove campaigns if you want to change the campaign composition of your portfolio bid strategy. Once you are correctly managing your bid strategies using portfolios, you'll probably be looking for other tweaks you can make to get more conversions and sales out of Google Ads. So check out this video up here where I show you one simple ad copy strategy that you can use that increased conversions by 35 to 70 percent in my client accounts it's another super simple strategy that boosts conversions in google ads that you can implement today so i highly recommend you check it out